The 3rd U.S. Infantry, traditionally known as the Old Guard, is the oldest active infantry unit in the Army, serving our nation since 1784. The Old Guard is the Army's official ceremonial unit and escort to the President, and it also provides security for Washington, D.C. in time of national emergency. We consist of two battalions. Our 1st Battalion is responsible for the sacred mission of laying our heroes to rest in Arlington National Cemetery. And our 4th Battalion is responsible for conducting ceremonies and special events and communicating the Army's story to our nation's citizens and the world. Every single soldier in the Old Guard has a unique mission, sprouting from over 200 years of honor and tradition. We are Old Guard soldiers. Each and every single one of us represents the United States Army to our nation and the world. We are members of the Army's oldest active infantry regiment. We continuously strive to uphold the honor, values, and tradition of those who came before us. We will never forget our responsibility to our fellow soldiers, our unit, and our country. We are Old Guard Soldiers. Ladies and gentlemen, our ceremony will begin momentarily. Today's ceremony is considered an outdoor ceremony, and headgear is to be worn by all military personnel. We also ask that you please silence all electronic devices at this time. Thank you. Good morning, and welcome to historic Joint Base Meyer-Henderson Hall. Originally established as Fort Whipple in 1863, and changed to Joint Base Meyer-Henderson Hall in 2009. Its main purpose was fortification in the defense of Washington. Since its inception, Joint Base Meyer-Henderson Hall has been the home of horse cavalry, artillery, and infantry. Today, it is home to the Old Guard, the United States Army Band, and the United States Army Garrison. Ladies and gentlemen, the United States Army Band, Pershing's Own, now presents a pre-ceremonial concert featuring the following musical selections, All-American Soldier and Americans We.
Chief George. Take care. Thank you. And one, and two, and, and our Lord. And one, and two, and three, four, and five. Once again, good morning and welcome. Today, the United States Army, Military District of Washington, represented by the soldiers of the 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard, and the United States Army Band, Pershing's own, pay a special tribute to Colonel Patrick M. Roddy Jr., who is changing command with Colonel David B. Rowland after two years of distinguished service to the United States Army and the 3rd United States Infantry Regiment. Participating in today's review, from left to right, is the United States Army Band, Pershing's own. Formed in 1922 by then Army Chief of Staff, General John J. Pershing, the United States Army Band is the premier band of our senior service. Pershing's own provides musical support for ceremonies and special events in our nation's capital and throughout the United States. The United States Army Band is under the direction of Major Aaron Morris and led by Drum Major Rob Moore. Elements of the Old Guard include Bravo Company, commanded by Captain Ian McKnight and led by Sergeant First Class Brett Rumping. Next online is Charlie Company, commanded by Captain William McKinnon and led by Sergeant First Class Josh Morrison. Next online is Honor Guard Company, commanded by Captain John Keeley and led by First Sergeant Adam Pugh. Following is the Commander-in-Chief's Guard, patterned after the unit created by General George Washington in 1776 to be his personal guard. The Commander-in-Chief's Guard is commanded by Captain Zachary Ricketts and led by Sergeant First Class Joshua Jenkins. Next on line, dressed in the Continental Musician's uniform, is the Old Guard Fife and Drum Corps, during the American Revolution, musicians wore the reverse color of their parent infantry unit. The men and women of the Old Guard Fife and Drum Corps maintained this tradition by wearing red coats instead of the infantry blue. The corps is led today by Drum Major John Parks. Outdoors, and last online, is the Presidential Salute Battery with four M5 anti-tank cannons.
Ladies and gentlemen, moving into position is the Commander of Troops for today's ceremony, Lieutenant Colonel Megan V. Ederly, Deputy Commander, 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard. Since the days of the American Revolution, the colors have been one of the most important elements of a military unit. Therefore, taking the center of our formation in just a moment and bearing the national color is the nation's foremost color team, the 3rd Infantry's Continental Color Guard, led by Staff Sergeant David Weston. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the advancing of the colors. Please be seated. The history of the 3rd United States Infantry Regiment reflects the growth and development of our nation. 55 well-earned battle streamers, 2 valorous unit awards, 3 meritorious unit commendations, and 5 superior unit awards attest to the Old Guard's record of bravery in action and achievements during peacetime. In 1922, the War Department granted permission for the Old Guard to pass in review with bayonets fixed. The Old Guard will now fix bayonets to the traditional beat of the drum.
Ladies and gentlemen, standing before you are the soldiers of the 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, the oldest active infantry regiment in the Army. Ladies and gentlemen, taking the reviewing stand is the reviewing official for today's ceremony, Colonel Patrick M. Roddy Jr., outgoing commander of the 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard, and Colonel David B. Rowland, the incoming commander, accompanied by the host, Major General Alan M. Pepin, Commanding General, United States Army, Military District of Washington. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as honors are rendered and remain standing for the invocation offered by Chaplain Brown. For the professionalism and dedication of the Old Guard, past and present. Those on the marks today and on mission in other places are a gift to our nation. I give you thanks for Colonel Roddy and his steady leadership during unprecedented times. Bless him for his sacrificial investment in this famed regiment. Bless his wife for her stalwart support. May Colonel Roddy leave the Old Guard with the satisfaction of exceptional success. According to your will, Colonel Rowland now joins this celebrated regiment. Grant him the wisdom, skill, and courage to command well. Strengthen his family for the sacrifices to come and give them joy in their time together. Bind Colonel Rowland to this formation and deliver to him and this regiment continued success in our sacred mission. Finally, grant our Army victory and our nation peace and prosperity always. In your holy name I pray, amen. Please be seated.
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the advancing of the colors and remain standing for the playing of the United States National Anthem. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, Old Guard soldiers are presenting Mrs. Roddy with a bouquet of red roses and a gift, in appreciation for her dedication and support of the regiment throughout the past two years. Also at this time, an Old Guard soldier is presenting Mrs. Rowland with a bouquet of yellow roses, welcoming her to the regiment. <laughs> Old Guard soldiers are also presenting the family members of the incoming commander with tokens of appreciation for their steadfast support to come throughout his command.
The Change of Command is a time-honored traditional event that runs deep in symbolism and heritage. In times past, the colors were an actual rallying point for troops in battle. In many ways, unit colors provide the same purpose today, to draw soldiers together for a common action. A unit relies upon the unity and loyalty of its members for success either in battle or garrison. The colors are the visible symbol of that unity and loyalty. The Command Sergeant Major is the custodian of the colors. When the colors are not displayed for the commander, they are in the care of the Command Sergeant Major. Command Sergeant Major Whittington will pass the colors of the 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard, to Colonel Roddy. Colonel Roddy will then pass the colors to Major General Pepin. Major General Pepin will pass the colors to Colonel Wolland, who will pass the colors back to Command Sergeant Major Whittington, again entrusting him with the care of the colors. Under the provisions of Army Regulation 600-20, the undersigned assumes command of the United States Army 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, 8 July 2022. Signed, David B. Rowland, Colonel Commanding. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the posting of the colors. Please be seated.
Ladies and gentlemen, Major General Pepin. I want to first start by recognizing a special guest, Colonel Retired Walter Warren Jr., who was a Medal of Honor recipient for his courageous actions in Vietnam in 1965. Please join me in a round of applause. Lieutenant General Pyatt, Lieutenant General Retired Hootem, Ms. Katie A, Senior Leaders, Distinguished Guests, the Honorary Colonel of the Regiment, Gray Gardner, Ms. Carla Moss, the Old Guard Mom. Former Old Guard soldiers, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us today for this time-honored tradition of recognizing the change of command between today, the 83rd and 84th Old Guard Commanders. Today it brings us together to recognize an incredible organization of soldiers, veterans, families, and their leaders. It's a true honor to serve with this world-class team. Speaking of an Army family, we are blessed to have Catherine Roddy here today, a high-performing professional in her own career as a Director of Plans and Policy for DOD's Suicide Prevention Office and a great supporter of the Old Guard soldiers and families for the past two years. Thank you. We're also glad to welcome Dave Rowland's family, his spouse Amy, along with their four kids, Zachary, Abigail, Isabel, and Andrew. The Old Guard and Guardian team is blessed to have you join this extended Army family. A shout out to both the Roddy and Rowland extended family networks joining us both here in person and virtually. To our third U.S. Infantry soldiers, better known as the Old Guard, you look great, as you always do. You set the example of commitment and discipline whether guarding the tomb of the unknown soldier or conducting military funerals in Arlington National Cemetery, serving as escorts or performing ceremonial duties at the White House or the U.S. Capitol, out in training areas deployed or supporting force protection on the installation or at any location where your mission sends you. You represent the Army with dignity, respect, high standards, and your skills. Commander Sergeant Phil Whittington, thank you and all the NCOs who epitomize the NCO creed and make each Old Guard formation stand out as an example of precision and discipline. Thanks to the officer and NCO leaders at Echelon who carry on the tradition of excellence and lead from the front to accomplish the mission. And thanks to all who plan and occasion this great ceremony. Please join me in a round of applause for our Tolg soldiers. Thanks to our talented soldiers of the U.S. Army Band who serve our Army and our nation through their inspirational music. As always, they look and sound phenomenal. Please join me in applauding Persia's own. There's no doubt Colonel Pat Roddy and Colonel Dave Rowland are experienced mixed and different emotions. As today marks the end as well as the beginning of command tours, and the great honor and responsibility that comes with commanding the Old Guard. The Army continues to elect the best for this important and highly visible command. Today's change of command ceremony is a rich military tradition that symbolically marks the transition of leadership and authority and the opportunity to recognize the soldiers they led and will lead. While the regiment commander is changing, I'm confident that the readiness of the, our professional soldiers and the expectations of the Old Guard will remain consistently reliable. Whether honoring our returning heroes, laying our fallen to rest, or standing watch at the tomb, or welcoming leaders and dignitaries of our nation and other nations, saluting retiring service members, or standing ready to support our joint task force mission as guardians of the national capital, or being the face of the Army, DOD, and nation at many highly visible events showcasing our Army and joint force. We appreciate the dedication you display every day as you represent the best of the U.S. Army and DOD to the world. 
I'm honored to serve alongside all our great soldiers as they represent the very best women and men of our nation has to offer. And they continue to serve honorably, inspire others. And while I highlight the professionalism, expertise, and readiness of our soldiers, we know that they do not serve alone. Each soldier has the support of our extended Army family that keeps the troops grounded in purpose, on azimuth and professional standards, and our productive members of society. We can never thank them enough. We thank our Army families. Please join me in applauding Army families. Again, a special thanks to Captain Roddy for her support during Pat's incredible command tour and distinguished career in this milestone achievement as the 83rd 30th Infantry Regimental Commander and support to the Old Gord family over the past two years. Kathleen provided her unwavering support while also working tirelessly again on the DOD team. Kathleen, on behalf of Heather and I and the whole Military District of Washington team, thanks for all you've done for our Army not just during this tour, but during your years, you and Pat have made a positive impact on our Army and the sacrifice made on this amazing journey. We wish you and Pat the very best as you plan your next chapter in your lives. But remember, you'll always be an Army family for life. Colonel Pat Roddy took command two years ago, an extremely challenging time in our Army across our nation and the world. We we're all learning how to accept and adapt the reality and risk of COVID. Yet there still was an Army mission. And as a commander, Pat was key to identifying risk and implementing service-wide mitigation measures, as well as internal actions to ensure the Old Guard's ability to execute their no-field directed mission would occur. That was no easy task, but long, strong leadership in a crisis creates opportunity. And Pat's team figured out how to adapt to mitigate risk with modified formations serve as the Army's official ceremony unit to escort the President with the added responsibility of maintaining readiness as a response force on the U.S. NORTHCOM's mission of Homeland Security in the National Capital Region and continuously defend support to civil authorities. And they never missed a beat. Precision and readiness does not occur overnight. It is achieved and sustained with the reps and sets and the basics, unit drills, exercises, and persistent action after reviews. This takes proactive dedicated professionals and a high standards backed by strong, steady leadership that cares for soldiers and families and leaders that are calm under pressure. Pat Roddy exemplified these traits during his command tour. The Old Guard mission does, does not have an off cycle. And thanks to Pat's mission focus, caring leadership, and risk mitigation, this team adapted to the restrictions and constraints necessary in a pandemic environment, even with limited resources and equipment constraints to accomplish their mission and achieved a 98% vaccination rate, an example of putting people first and executing mission command philosophy and implementing decentralized operations. Well done. Under the leadership of Colonel Roddy and his keen focus on ensuring soldiers are proficient in individual tactical skills as well as ceremonial skills, the 3rd Infantry Regiment executed several iterations of expert infantry badge, expert soldier badge, and expert field medical badge qualifications, achieving a pass rate above the Army average. They also executed mortar proficiency, trained force protection, and sustained a military police special reaction team capability to ensure tactical readiness. This training ensured current readiness for contingency missions, as well as prepared our TOG soldiers for following assignments across the Army's tactical formations and training commands. The Old Guard has amassed an impressive list of accomplishments over the last two years under Pat's leadership. Some of these achievements include a redesign of a command-focused operational approach to better enable the execution of operations, from ceremonies to crisis response. They improve how the Old Guard leverages digital command and control systems in support to mission command to simultaneously execute multiple operations in the District of Washington and across multiple states. They restructured and enhanced how the regiment tracks and delivers U.S. NORTHCOM operational readiness. Pat designed a novel 1,000 persons crisis response force, the only regional capability of its type, and would implement it within four months, and subsequently reduce the regiment's response time by 50%. Colonel Roddy flawlessly served 
as a joint team capital commander for the 2021 presidential inauguration, where he led units at the U.S. Capitol, the White House, Arlington National Cemetery, and Andrews Air Force Base, and accomplished this during an unprecedented pandemic environment, a significant heavy lift for the regiment even in a non-pandemic environment. In its Arlington National Cemetery mission, the Old Guard carried out an amazing 7,000-plus funerals, 20 of which Pat personally led, including services of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Secretary Donald Rumsfeld, Secretary Colin Powell, and General Raymond Rodnero, and multiple other senior officials. The regiment also carried out more than 5,000 other ceremony events across 14 states and in D.C. Colonel Roddy also served as commander of troops for two National Memorial Day observations, National Day observations, and numerous re-ceremonies, arrivals of dignitaries, and many general senior officer retirement ceremonies, and numerous iterations of Twilight Two events. These events are special and significant because dedicated execution of each service member leaves a positive, lasting memory of the service on the service members' families being honored on the public and as an example of our nation's military discipline and readiness. Our national military senior leaders put their faith, trust, and confidence in the 3rd U.S. Infantry Regiment and expects our soldiers will falsely execute their mission during national service or support to civil authorities in time of crisis. And they continue to deliver each and every time. Pat, your soldiers will put first. You cared for them, you trained them, and you provided a command climate where each soldier had the opportunity to excel. You have improved the regiment and returned it back to its full force capability, and you gave your soldiers the tools they needed to effectively accomplish their mission. There's no doubt you gave 100% to your soldiers, the regiment, and our army, and that is all one could ask of a leader. You never asked your soldiers to do anything you would not do yourself. You were often there with them in execution of tasks, regardless of the weather, time of day, or time of night. If they remember one thing about you, Pat, it may be the fact that you synchronized the ceremony so this passing review occurred before our speeches. Well done. Pat, the regiment, the military district of Washington, Northcom, and the Army will miss your leadership as the A3rd Old Guard Commander, an example you set as well as Kathleen. You ran through the finish line as a great teammate, a team player, a critical thinker, a risk mitigator, a problem solver, and a humble servant leader. And I'm blessed to call you both a fellow commander and friend. Pat, Heather, and I wish you, Kathleen, the very best on your next phase of transition as you plan to retire later this year after an extremely successful career. You led from the front, and we know you will do the same as a soldier for life in Army family for life. It has been our honor to serve with you and observe your example that you set. Know that our home will always be open to you. The military just of Washington family is also blessed to extend Team Roman a warm welcome as Dave leads the regiment as the 84th Old Guard Commander. Dave and Amy are no strangers to the National Capital Region. While I know they've lived here before, Dave, I'm guessing this time will be much more exciting than the past. As you lead Old Guard in this future Army, Joint, and Northcom mission sets, I have no doubt you have already feeling at home with the great transition that Pat and the team provided, even if you are still unpacking boxes in your home here at Fort Myer. Dave and his family have served around the world in challenging roles and unique opportunities and recently moved from Newport, Rhode Island, where he was at the U.S. Naval War College. He's a proven leader that our Army has entrusted to execute command responsibilities and authorities as directed in AR 600-20, and the significant responsibility that are inherent to the Old Guard mission. Dave's diverse leadership and staff experience will enable him to quickly adapt to the highly visible missions associated with the Army Joint Force and Northcom strategic equities with their strategic effects. Colonel Roland comes with a great reputation, and I cannot think of a more capable leader to ensure the Old Guard will be ready for future ceremonial force protection, defense support to civil authorities, contingencies, as well as adapting to unforeseen challenges, new risks, requirements, as well as opportunities. Dave, I know you are eager to settle into command and continue to enhance the strong relations across the national capital region and among the great service component teammates, lead federal agencies, and interesting partners to ensure teamwork and unity command leads to mission success. I am also confident the regiment will continue their great reputation while adding new chapters to its historical legacy 
and the Old Guard officers, NCOs, and soldiers will continue to excel under Dave's leadership, as well as resolve issues to ensure mission success while taking care of our people. America's Regiment, Heed the Guardian, Army Strong, Winning Matters. Ladies and gentlemen, Colonel Roddy. <laughs> Lieutenant General Pyatt, Lieutenant General Retired Huntoon, Miss KDA, Major General Pepin, Command Sergeant Major Velez, a fellow Commander's Command Sergeant's Major, and the incredible network of those who have either served in or otherwise maintained some connection with this great regiment. Thank you for joining us today. The type of ceremony that you saw today is a foundational event for this regiment. From honoring our veterans or welcoming foreign heads of state, this is the only Army unit that can execute it with this precision and scale. During the COVID-19 pandemic, this regiment did not execute a full force ceremony like you saw today for 32 months. The by far the longest gap in the 74-year history of this regiment on Fort Myer. In fact, when I took command 25 months ago, it had already been seven months since they'd executed one. Now, that's not to say they weren't busy, because over the last two years, they executed more than 15,000 events across 20 states, including a presidential inauguration. They literally reached audiences approaching 100 million people all while maintaining readiness as Joint Task Force NCR's primary Title X Contingency Response Force. But we only started this type of full force ceremony again late last month. For the vast majority of the force, it was the first time they'd ever done one, ever. Many had served here for up to two years and hadn't done one. So after a lot of training, what you saw this morning was only the third time they've executed this after a 32-month gap. So let's give them a round of applause for that. <laughs> so they would agree the biggest thanks I can give them is allowing them not to have to be on the floors to listen to me talk, which, by the way, is now the new baseline for how the Old Guard will execute all of these ceremonies moving forward. And we look forward to the Army adapting that across the force. I'd like to recognize a few people here, here today. Colonel Retired William Marm, Medal of Honor recipient for actions at the Battle of the Idrang Valley, Vietnam, while assigned as a platoon leader in 17 Cav. Thank you, sir, for being here. Former 3rd Infantry Regimental Commanders, Lieutenant General Retired Huntoon, Brigadier General Retired Taylor, Colonels Williamson, Gardner, Procone, Bush, Garkey, Laufenberg, former 3rd Regimental Command Sergeant Majors, Beeson, Wimbro, Stitzel. Hey, over the last two years, I have been mentored by all 11 of these former RCOs and Regimental Sergeant Majors. Nowhere else have I ever seen a lineage of former unit leaders so focused in the success of a future unit. And I know that they're going to provide the exact same support to Dave that they did to me, and it's pretty awesome. Ms. Lisa Marie Riggins, the Executive Director of USO National Capital Region. Colonel Rob Sutcher, Commander, Marine Corps Barracks, Washington. Flip Godfrey from the Old Guard Association. My oldest friend here today, the Honorable Joe Jordan. Tom Williams, Dane Hughes, Justin Royce. Justin made the trip here from New York, and before this morning, he actually didn't believe I was in the Army. Steve Walsh, Dan Mudd. Two soldiers at heart who were stuck for years in Marine uniforms. Thank you for being here. Commanders Devin and Sarah Brennan and their son Hayes are here representing the Coast Guard and our good friend Megan Martin and her son Wes. Miss Jean Moore, a runner of the Fort Myer Thrift Shop. Jean is the only one here today that remembers me when I was four years old and lived on this post. Thanks for being here today, Jean. CW4 retired Pete and Catherine Roddick and Staff Sergeant retired and former TUSAB and TOG soldier Gail Belmont in the Quilts of Honor volunteer team. Thanks for all coming today. Now, as I look through the RSVP list, I recognize there are people here from almost every unit I've ever served in, in the Army. And this broad representation reinforces why serving in this unit is so special. 
first, this unit is your army. These soldiers seem like a homogenous formation of blue when they're on the floor. But when you look closely, you will see regimental crests, combat patches, overseas service bars, and awards for valor from service across our army and during careers that only know an army in conflict. This isn't a model of your army. This is your army. Second, these 1,600 soldiers that you see on the screen behind me have the awesome responsibility of representing our army and our values to the world and cultivating the special relationship between the American people and their army a bond that is the backbone of our military as one of our nation's most trusted institutions. The American people's trust in its military is not inherently owed. It is not the right of wearing this uniform. It is surely not guaranteed, and it must be earned every day. These soldiers play a small but important role in helping to cultivate that trust. 1.2 million active guard and reserve soldiers wear the cloth of our nation. However, most Americans do not know a soldier. Each year, for hundreds of thousands of people, the only interaction they will ever have with an American soldier is through this regiment. Right now, right now, someone is watching a sentinel at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier walking their solemn 21 steps, and it's their first and potentially only glimpse of an American service member. This is where our service members, this is where our soldiers do their most important work. They uphold the standards of this profession as they represent it to the world. They close the gap between the American people and their army. They build the future. They demonstrate that this is not only the world's most lethal fighting force, but it lives up to our national values and how we apply that force wherever called upon that our army is an honorable place for their sons and daughters to serve. When soldiers arrive to this regiment, they join a guild of one-of-a-kind units, all very different, but in some form or another, the best in the world at what they do. This is only built on the back of investing the people in the systems necessary to deliver that specialized excellence at scale. And it only works with the buy-in of every team member down to the lowest level. Talk to this team, and the soldiers will inspire you with their commitment to their mission and its purpose. Now, across every profession, when you increase that type of specialization, it comes at the cost of adaptability, both cognitively and culturally. And one of the things I am most proud about of this organization is its culture of agility and innovation. I can sure tell you that my time here did not unfold the way that I expected it did when I found out I was coming here in mid-2019. Things, well, they turned out differently. And I can sure tell you that the last two years have challenged this formation in unique ways in a highly visible and complex environment. During some very tough days, these soldiers stood as an enduring example of good. What a cadre of diverse professionals can do in execution of a common goal. As the character of our profession evolves, Success on future battlefields will be built on trust, not on compliance. And this unit represents that. They are who you want to represent your army. Now, I have some regrets leaving here. I never got to yell, order, fire locks in an official ceremony. I'll never be tall enough to march an honor guard company. I never mastered the fife and drum corps, drum majors, fancy hand holstering maneuver. And I never got to play a fife. The fife and drum corps commander told me I was banned from all instruments after complaining about the cost of the handmade Swiss bugles. Apparently, I didn't like that. But I can tell you throughout my career, there have been a few things more humbling than taking a knee and presenting a flag to a family member on the moment of their final goodbye to a loved one. I'll always remember the horses of the Quezon platoon passing my office window each morning beginning their daily journey to lay a veteran to rest. It brings me first circles to my first memories in life as a four-year-old child living here on this post, nose pressed against glass, watching that same platoon pass our quarters every morning. The soldiers have changed over the last 40 years. The missions, 
the standards and the values remain exactly the same. Very soon I will take off this uniform for the last time and there is no place I would rather conclude my career and I am proud that these are the soldiers that will carry on. Over the last year, I'm convinced that Dave Boland is who we want to lead this regiment for the next two years. Since Dave and I started talking about the old guard, it has become crystal clear that he understands the value proposition of this organization and how to leverage his experience and his wisdom to deliver the right results for our army while taking care of our people. Dave, welcome to you. Welcome to Amy and your family. I'm excited for how this organization will grow under your leadership, what you will achieve together, and frankly, how much fun you're gonna have doing it. Welcome. There are a few people I'd like to briefly recognize who played an outsized role in the success of this organization. Major General Omar Jones, excuse me, Lieutenant General Omar Jones. Thank you for your trust and commanding with a clarity that empowered your subordinates in a way that can only be described as the epitome of organizational leadership. Major General Pepin, sir, Thank you for your transparency and your openness. Your commitment to ensuring everybody understands the why behind your intent has enabled the entire military district of Washington to operate more effectively as a team. Each of your subordinate commands is broadly different and thank you personally for your investment, trust and commitment to all of us. Ms. KDA and Mr. Alexander, and your incredible teams at Arlington National Cemetery. Thank you for continuing to strengthen the special relationship and bond between the 3rd Infantry Regiment and Arlington National Cemetery during some incredibly challenging times, during too many events that we could even count. Thank you and your teams for being such great teammates. Military District of Washington staff, particularly J-35 Special Events and Ceremonies and Outreach Directorate. Mike Wagner, Scott Hines, thanks for being great teammates. Jim Laufenberg. Thanks for your support as an RCO, and I will say it publicly, as the professional who is the linchpin that makes more things happen around here than we give you credit for. You make it all happen. Command Sergeant Major Edwin Brooks, thank you for integrating me into this regiment and teaching me the intricacies of what right looked like. Command Sergeant Major Philip Whittington, I don't know where he is right now, he's somewhere, but I know he can hear me. You are the heartbeat and the conscience of this regiment. Thank you for your leadership your candor, and your investment in our soldiers. Everything this regiment does is the benefit of your tireless effort to ensure we live up to the standards that are expected. Thank you for always being the Sergeant Major who never said, this is how we've always done it, and always being the non-commissioned officer that says, what does the Army need me to do right now in this environment to solve this problem? That's the type of leadership that is the future of the NCO Corps. Thank you for your honesty, candor, personal mentorship, and endless supply of candy. Lieutenant Colonel Etterly, thank you for doing the regiment proud today as our commander of troops. I keep putting lemons on your desk and you keep cranking out lemonade. Thank you for playing a stronger role than any DCO I've ever observed. Thank you for being such a great friend to Catherine and me. To the battalion commanders, Lieutenant Colonels Dave Lamborn, Rich Towner, Mike Thompson, Chuck Wall, and your Command Sergeants Major Cardle, Carter, Riedel, Stackpole, and Kirk. Nobody could have predicted the uniqueness of the last two years, but you all led through it like it was your plan all along. Each of you resourced the, and built the capacity to execute high-profile, decentralized operations and empower junior leaders to execute with the trust that they will do the right thing independently from Los Angeles to the White House. This is organizational leadership far beyond what your peers across the Army are required to master. Thank you. Fellow commanders, Dave Bowling, Wynn Adkins, Chris Nyland, Josh Seagraves, Jim Keen, and Andy Esch, thank you for being such great teammates whether it's supporting each other to do what we need to do or those late night calls to commiserate about the challenges that we have to figure out how to solve and supporting us, each of us through it. Greg Gardner, the honorary colonel of the regiment, thank you for your incredible commitment and time and energy to this organization and me personally. Ms. Carla Moss, you are the old guard's godmother. Your support is and always will be absolutely stunning. To my wonderful wife, Catherine, About the same time I took command, she began work as the Director of Plans and Policy for the Department of Defense Suicide Prevention Program and held that position for almost all of my command. 
as she worked some of our society's greatest challenges, she worked longer hours than I did. She dealt with far more complex problems than me and directly impacted the lives of far more people across our Department of Defense than me. Yet every day, she was there to challenge me to be my best in command. She'd make me defend my logic, force me to cast aside my parochialism and experiential bias, make me reframe problems and sometimes just send me back to the drawing board saying, try again, you can do better. She does, as she always has, make me not only a better at what I do, but in who I am. Thank you, honey. I love you, and I'm incredibly proud of everything about you. This ceremony is just one of many events the Old Guard will execute today. Whether in Arlington National Cemetery, across the NCR, training tactical tasks, or standing ready as JTF NCR's crisis response force. Right now, there's at least one funeral happening in Arlington National Cemetery. While each funeral is one of many for these soldiers each day, among up to 100 a week, it is the only such honors that family will ever receive. Perfection is the standard every time. The dedication, professionalism, and discipline of these soldiers holds the weight of this entire profession on their shoulders in the solemn moment where in their presence we close the chapter in a family's relationship with their army. In those moments, these soldiers are ambassadors for all of us in uniform, past, present, and future. And they represent us all exceptionally well every day because they are your army. America's regiment, heed the guardian, winning matters. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Colonel Rowland. Well, Pat, that was a, that was a really inspirational speech. I know I asked you what you thought your speech was on a scale of one to 10. Uh, before the ceremony started, you said, ah, oh, it's probably a six. I would give you a probably a nine or 10 on that. That was very inspirational, thanks. Thanks for that, that was, a, that was great. I want to thank everyone for attending today's ceremony and honoring the historic 3rd Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard. I'd especially like to thank the many families and close friends that have traveled many hours and, and further places to join us. It means a lot to Amy and I that you are willing to come and travel so far. Of note, I'd like to recognize my grandmother, Lillian Rowland, who uh, turns 90 this November and traveled from the Carlisle, Pennsylvania area just for this occasion. Uh, you honor me by making the trip for this event. Thank you very much for being here. Next, Amy, thank you for so supporting me in our Army endeavor together. I am privileged to call you my wife. You're a phenomenal mother and spouse, uh, and you look more beautiful today than when we got married. I love you very much. I know we will turn Fort Myer into the place we call home in short order after getting rid of all those boxes in the house. And I look forward to exploring and really re-exploring the Washington DC area with you and the kids. Zach, Abby, Izzy, and Andrew, I hope you enjoyed the change of command ceremony. It was pretty cool, wasn't it? I know you'll learn a lot more about the old guard and, and ceremonies here on Fort Myer. And I wouldn't be surprised that you'll eventually be given a grade sheet from the ceremonials and special events staff to help improve our performance. Also, just so you know, after today, you can only visit the Quezon platoon stables and horses after you finish your schoolwork. General Pepin and Sergeant Major Velez, who is my old uh, first Sergeant Ranger buddy in the 173rd, I look forward to working with you uh, at the, in the MDW and JTF staff in the future and making the Military District of Washington a great place to serve, protect, and honor our great nation. To uh, Colonel Roddy, Pat, thanks for such a phenomenal handover. Uh, I found out I was gonna take command of the Old Guard when I was deployed in Mongolia. And Pat and I uh, talked 
the same day I found out, and he, he told me about this great organization. I always remember that. Thank you for everything you've done for this regiment, and I hope you're still a part of it as you transition. You're welcome back anytime. To the soldiers, NCOs, and officers of the Old Guard, America's regiment, my family and I are honored to be a part of your remarkable team. I've only seen a glimpse of what you do in the last few days, and it's safe to say you're among some of the most talented soldiers in our Army. I look forward to working with all of you to inspire Americans to trust the United States Army, build confidence with our allies and partners, and honor our veterans and secure the National Capital Region. Thank you again for attending today's ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the Army Song. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. Colonel and Mrs. Roddy will receive well-wishers in the center of the floor for photos immediately following. 
Colonel and Mrs. Rowland will host a reception in the north foyer of Conmee Hall to your right. Thank you for your attendance and enjoy the rest of your day.